Right? Have you seen death in war? I know what it looks like. I've been there. I've lived through several wars. God. All right. You don't appease evil. You know, Chamberlain did that with Hitler. Nobody ever learns. You keep appeasing the evils. You keep appeasing evil people. What happens? You get more war, not less. Peace with Putin is not peace. It's just delay before his next aggression. If you realize what motivates him, you would never negotiate with him. Yes, I like war. <laughs> As if anybody who's actually seen war likes war. I hate war. That's why you can't appease Putin. Because I hate war. All right, let's see. There's a little bit more I wanted here. Yeah, this is his apocalyptic vision of what Allow happens. Allow me, therefore, to prognosticate, prognosticate. pessimistically Here's the and worse realistically. I believe that all of the following consequences are already inevitable. Now, notice, this is stunning to me, not because of anything philosophical, but Jordan Peterson now is going to go outside of his realm of expertise, completely outside of his realm of expertise. He's going to go to an area where he knows nothing about, and he's going to procrastinate about the future, which even when you're an expert, you should be very, very careful in doing. But he's going to make predictions, as a prophet does, about what is going to happen in the next few years in the world because of this war. And this is amazing to me. First, First, skyrocketing energy prices. I firmly expect oil prices to hit $300 a barrel. So you expect oil prices to hit $300 a barrel. Triple their price today. Now, on what basis would you expect that? Where is this crystal ball? Where is the economist who supports this assertion? What would have to happen for oil prices to go to $300 a barrel? Well, right now they're at 100, bouncing around 100, sometimes 95, sometimes 105. What would have to happen for oil to go to $300 a barrel? Well, one, demand for oil would skyrocket. Skyrocket. And supply would not be able to match demand, and therefore prices would go through the roof. Alternatively, Demand, uh, uh, demand wouldn't skyrocket. Demand would stay where it is right now. And supply would shrink dramatically. But, but why would supply shrink dramatically? Are the Saudis just going to stop pumping oil? Are the Russians? Russia is still selling oil. Russian oil is on the world markets. So how do you get to $300 a barrel? I mean, what this is ignoring completely is the fact that the global economy is slowing, that the United States is on the verge of a recession, that China is probably in a recession already. That demand for oil is going to go down, not up, as the world economy starts shrinking, not because of Russia, but because of the stupidity around COVID. So demand is going to go down. So even if supply goes down, prices might go up a little bit, but $300 a barrel? Where do you come up with these numbers? This is the kind of hysterical prophecy you get from somebody who's, I fear, lost it. Stephen, you have become a, a tool of Russian propaganda and nothing else. That is... Bizarre. <laughs> Bizarre. Or worse in the upcoming year or two. Perhaps I am wrong in such a 300 or worse in the year or next year or two. But the Russians still have control. I, by the way, will take that bet. Anybody want to bet me on $300 oil uh, in the next year or two? I'll, I'll take that. Just, just tell me how much I need to put down where. All of some very important taps and will be hard-pressed not to employ that strategic advantage as their position in Ukraine and on the world stage deteriorates. There is no 
there's no scenario in which oil goes to $300 a barrel. It just doesn't happen. Just because of the dynamics of supply and demand. It, 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 it just, <laughs> if oil goes up to 150, demand will collapse. The world would go into a massive recession. Demand would collapse and prices would have to go down. There is no mechanism. There's no imaginal mechanism by which oil can go to $300. I mean, this is, uh, the only thing I can think of is that some Russian is whispering this in his ear, that this is pure Russian propaganda. I'll give you 10 to 1 odds that it's not going to $300 a barrel. Where in the universe? I mean, Saudi Arabia would have to collapse. As it inevitably must. These higher energy prices will, of course, hurt the world's poor and developing countries hardest. Yeah, all right, let's stop there. Because then he says, I mean, his next one is, um, we're going to have famine. 150 million people are going to starve. Again, I, I, I believe that is a Russian talking point. And uh, what was the third, um, I forget what the third one was. Oh, mass migration. Because of the famine, we'll get mass migration. And finally, the only one that I think has any credence is Russia will use tactical nukes. But we're not going to condemn Russia for using tactical nukes. We're not going to criticize them. It's all our fault because we are fighting this war and we will not give Russia what they want. We will not bend over in front of Putin and allow him to do whatever he wants with us. It, it, it's stunning. It, it, in, let me just, one last comment, because if I say it, you won't believe that he actually said it. So I just want him to say it. All right, listen to this. Given our current state of ideological paralysis, we cannot do without the Russians on our side here in the rest of the Western world. What? We cannot do without the Russians on our side. Why? Why? Because Russia's building churches. Because Russia represents the true West. Because Russia is free from these crazy leftists. Russia has never been a part of the West. Russia is always been an antagonist to the Enlightenment, with the exception maybe of a little bit of Catherine the Great. It's an antagonist to the Enlightenment, an antagonist of the West. Russia fought the Nazis. Russia was communist when it fought the Nazis. Russia was as bad as the Nazis when it fought the Nazis. Russia wasn't on our side. It wasn't on the West side. Russia was the enemy. It just was convenient for us to use them to help us defeat another enemy. But Russia has been the enemy of the West for most of its history. Russia has no part in the West. It is a mystical backward, unenlightened country. Now, I'm not saying every Russian, obviously, but most of the good Russians have left and most of the good Russians are leaving now. But Russia was never part of the West, and it is not a part of the West today, and it is certainly not crucial to the West's survival, to the West's success. So, all right. I mean, you can watch the whole thing. I encourage you to. Um, it, you know, I think it just, it's just, it's just, it's as bad. The rest of it is as bad. Um, this is the right. This is the intellectuals on the right. This is the rationalization for the, 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 the Republican Party, the Tucker Carlson's, the, the, the um, uh, national conservatives. Russia, by the way, I mean, one of the biggest myths that Putin and the Russians have been perpetrating is the idea that Russia saved the West from the Nazis. 
But Russia did not save the West and the Nazis. It is the West that saved Russia from the Nazis. Russia would not have succeeded as it did, as fast as it did, against the Nazis without Western help, without American support. Yeah, it, it probably would have fought the Nazis to stalemate. Maybe it would have even gained the upper hand ultimately. But after even more tens of millions had died, they would have never taken Eastern Europe without American support, without American materials, without America slowness on the Western Front because of promises Roosevelt made to Stalin. And remember that Russia was communist then. Russia has never been our friend. It has always been our enemy. It has been the enemy of the West, of Western civilization, of the principles of the West, of the ideas of the West. And, and the fact that Stalin is today revered in Russia, I, I think I told you I was in Red Square, and there's a mall next to Red Square, and in the mall there was a a, a, a guy dressed up as, as Stalin. And, and people were rushing to get photos with him. Stalin is revered by many Russians. That tells you how barbaric, how anti-Western. And, and, and that's the thing. If, if, if the whole point here is to fight Stalin, if the whole point is never to get communism in the West again, if the whole idea is to fight the left represented by Stalin, then Russia is the last country in the world to do that. Russia is still enamored with Stalin and therefore with the communism. So I, Jordan Peterson is completely confused here. It's Putin that admires the Soviet Union. It's Putin that admires communism under Stalin. Dugin founded a nationalist communist political party in Russia. Dugin, Putin's philosopher. So the whole analysis of the conditions in the state of Russia is completely upside down. It's completely wrong. And, and again, Jordan Peterson knows history. And I assume he knows the admiration with which many Russians, including Putin, have towards Stalin and the Soviet Union. I mean, it's not that Stalin is afraid of the return of communism. Yeah, he thinks the West is wacky, but not because of communism. But you see, to Jordan Peterson, Stalin is the enemy because Stalin is an atheist. To Jordan Peterson, the left, the woke, the secular, all have to lead to evil and therefore communism and Stalin. I mean, what's stunning about this and what's scary about this and what's upsetting about this and why I spent all that time trying to wake you up with regard to Jordan Peterson is because that video is watched 1.5 million times. It'll probably be watched several million times by the time it's done. Millions of people are exposed to these ideas. Millions of people take these ideas seriously. And Jordan Peterson is considered a guru on the right a major intellectuals, a major thinker. I know many objectivists who love his work. But this is scary stuff, and it should be viewed as scary stuff. This is the enemy. And if you can't see that we have to fight a two-front war, yes, we have to fight the left. Yes, we have to fight the woke insanity. but not by giving up our freedoms, not by giving up on the enlightenment, not by giving up on individualism and capitalism, not by giving up on liberty, not by adopting collectivism, which is what Jordan Peterson and the national conservatives want us to. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, 
we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.